Next, we're going to spend a few moments configuring the site setup. Under the Site Setup panel, you'll find many of the key global settings that govern how your site will work. We'll go through this to see what settings you should add or customize to tailor your site to your specific needs. So we'll go back to the admin. When you first click on the Site Setup panel, the page you'll be shown lists config groups. Now these are a key component to how Cartweaver controls the various features and functions of the application and how the admin handles them. For now, it's good to know that this offers a tremendous amount of customizability, but it's also important to know that diving into these takes a lot of forethought and is outside the scope of what we're going to be covering here. If you should decide to use Cartweaver as your store solution, you'll want to consult the documentation on config groups and see what can be done with them. For this course, we will just leave them in their default settings, which is what you will do in the vast majority of the sites that you're likely to work on. So now let's go ahead and click on Cart Display Settings. This governs how the cart will be displayed to the customer. And so we can go up here and we say your add to cart action. What the add to cart action will do is either you can be taken directly to the shopping cart and see what's in it, or you can click product details page. What that will do is they'll remain on the page where they clicked the add to cart button, but they'll simply be shown the fact that they've added something to their cart. Some prefer it this way where it doesn't disrupt the flow of shopping. Others prefer it because it encourages them to buy right away. You can decide how you want to handle this with your store. There's other basic settings here like a small image shown in the cart or not. You can show the SKU name in the cart, and we'll talk about SKUs a little later. They're part of your product entries. Show custom values in the cart, edit custom values. You can also customize how your products are ordered in your cart, ordered by name or when they're added, and also a continue shopping link. In your show cart page, there'll be a link that'll say continue shopping. With this setting, you can either be taken to the home page of the site or just back to the product page where you were. This setting to force confirmation on all orders, even test orders will force a confirmation if you have this checked. If you don't want to go through that, you can just uncheck it. A good feature throughout the admin that you'll want to remember is when you see these little blue question marks, if you want to know what happens on this line, go ahead and click it and it'll expand it out and then you'll have a hint as to what that particular line handles. This is used really frequently throughout the admin, and you'll want to refer to it if you have questions about what each individual line does. Next, we want to look at cart pages. We discussed this before, and when you installed Cartweaver into your site, if you just left the default settings for the names of the pages, just go ahead and leave that as is, or edit it as needed. Next, we want to look at customer settings. We get a lot of requests for people who want to just buy as a guest and not have to have a username and password. Although I don't recommend this, it's always good to make sure that you have a username and password for your customers because that way, when they come back, they're not going into your database every time as a new customer. But for some sites that don't have a lot of sales or infrequent sales, this can kind of be a problem. So with this, you can disable whether you have a customer account or if it requires a customer account. Also, you can show the Remember Me checkbox so that if they want to be remembered after they're logged in, the site will set a cookie and remember them. Let's look at debug settings. Debug settings, we won't get into a lot of detail on this. You can go ahead and click on the little question marks if you have questions about each individual line. But what the debug setting does is you can enable the debug setting, and while you're testing your site, if it throws an error, instead of just throwing a plain error that doesn't give you any information saying there's just an error on the page, it actually gives you the details of what kind of error was thrown. This is really helpful in figuring out why your site is broken especially if it's on the server and it doesn't work, but it's locally and it does work, sometimes this will lead you to what's causing the problem. Once you're done with that, you can uncheck it to disable the bug handling. Also, enable error handling. What that does is if it's checked, your users will be shown a custom error page that you can design and control. If it's unchecked, if an error occurs on the site, then the user will be shown whatever error the server throws, and sometimes those are really ugly. So once your site goes live, you'll definitely want to enable that. Then we go to email settings. And again, there's quite a bit going on here, so we won't go into it line by line. But what this does is, first of all, allows you to set the information of what your email server is so that your site can interact with your email and send emails OK. What your format of the email is going to be, whether it's just plain text or if it's HTML. And then there's fields here where you can configure and enter the information you want shown. For example, your email signature. If you want a standard signature, you can enter it here. Also, order information.